So let me now, because I've talked about the exceptions, go back to sexual abuse and get into some of the vagaries of age differentials and so on. Um, I mentioned two different kinds of sexual abuse, sexual exploitation and sexual assault. There are two different kinds. Sexual exploitation has a number of different potential components. It has, and two to be exact, it has child pornography and child prostitution. Child pornography has become a major worldwide issue with the advent of the web. Um, there have been numerous articles. I just picked up one to, um, to share with you. This is a, an article from the August 18th, I believe this was the New York Times. No, I'm sorry, Christian Science Monitor. Um, and it was 2005. The first paragraph says, over the past four years, the number of reports of child pornography sites to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children has grown by almost 400%. Four years, 400%. And law enforcement officials have been particularly disturbed by the increased number of commercial sites that offer photos of exploited children in return for credit card numbers. Those fighting the child porn business say it has become a global multi-billion dollar industry. Okay? So this is not a small issue. It is indeed international in scope. And part of it is the medium, but also part of it is apparently a hunger by quite a few people. And the um, victimization of children, in this particular case, the exploitation of children, is using them sexually in the context of developing these photographs. So um, it's something where we might find ourselves in the position, and these are difficult situations where a client comes to us, and we're talking, and they're talking about their, you know, they come in because of sexual issues. And they let slip that they've been looking at some sites. And you ask, well, what kind? And you're not fishing for specific, you know, but what's, what's happening that you're disturbed about this? Well, I've been, I've been looking at ones with kids. Well, how old? I don't know, six, seven years old. Well, guess what? We have a child abuse report to make. Okay. Now, whether it's just the viewer or getting it into the FBI, which is the organization that's kind of doing cross, uh, both cross state lines as well as the coordinated law enforcement effort internationally, but we would start with our local child protective center. So viewing that pornography, and it's actually, if I, I'm going to read you the actual section because this is this is use it's useful to speak to this. This is a, and it's one 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 sixty six a I believe three sixty five a. It just says sexual exploitation refers to conduct involving matter depicting a minor engaged in obscene acts in violation of another section preparing selling or distributing. Um, uh, an employment of a minor to perform these acts. And then any person who knowingly promotes, aids, assists, employs, uses, persuades, induces, or coerces a child, or any person responsible blah, 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 for knowingly encourages a child to engage in or assist others in da, 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 the live performance or sexual conduct and, or posing. Uses. That seems to be a pretty broad definition, doesn't it? When there is a, a, a viewing of child pornography, is that clearly a child has been abused. So in that case, or in our, in our definition, it would be a child has been exploited. The law doesn't require us to have complete information in order to file a report. So given those two things, um, that we would have a mandated report, but we wouldn't necessarily say the perpetrator. We're not required to know the perpetrator. The perpetrator is our client. You can say, it's somebody who told me they have downloaded or saw child pornography. Now, the problem with this one, so I actually think it requires that. But the problem with this one is, what is CPS or the police going to do? Child prostitution, underreported. Um, not you know we don't see huge statistics, although David Ficklor and, and Lisa Jones report on uh, you know kind of victimization of minors of juveniles. But oftentimes there's very little motivation for the juvenile prostitute to report him or herself um, because this is how they make their living and there's less motivation for the Johns. Because okay? not only do they get arrested for soliciting prostitutes, but they also get ar arrested for, um, for engaging in pedophilia. Okay? They're having sex with minors. It could be unlawful sexual intercourse. It could be a host of other types of things. So child prostitution is fairly common. If you, in most large cities in the United States, even some small ones, if you go to the Tenderloin, 
there are probably at any given time, you know, 70, 80, 90 youngsters under the age of 18 who are engaged in prostitution. And that's a child abuse report. If you do it in your professional capacity, you're making reports. If you're driving through the Tenderloin, uh, you're not. So those are two kinds of exploitation. What we encounter more frequently are people reporting the sexual assault of children or children reporting a sexual assault. And sexual assault has a number of different crimes included in it, has a whole list of behaviors, again, in that first section that I was reading to you, uh, 11165. And, um, and it includes things like um, rape, uh, which the legal definition of it is sexual intercourse. Um, it's a heterosexual act, by the way, in California, um, where th there can be sexual assaults, of course, that are not heterosexual in nature, but rape is defined specifically as uh, sexual intercourse, which is the, um, um, the penetration of a vagina by a penis, however slight. And um, it's where consent is not given or cannot be given because of physical or mental disability or where there is force, threats, or deception or intoxicating substances used. So where, there's a, where a person is threatened and engages in sexual intercourse. Also, something called rape in concert, which means one person helping a second rape a third. Um, there was a case, it well, was not a California case, but a case, um, I'm thinking Illinois, but uh, I might be wrong, involving a mom who was living with her boyfriend, where she held her daughter down for the boyfriend to have intercourse with the daughter. And uh, the, the boyfriend was convicted of rape, and the mother was convicted of rape in concert. Incest, of course, is also a mandated report. You don't have to know these fine distinctions, but be aware that, um, that intercourse, uh, right, excuse me, incest includes in California only sexual intercourse or marriage between parents and children, ancestors and descendants of every degree, so a grandfather and a granddaughter, and brothers and sisters of the half and whole blood. So technically, incest does not occur between two cousins in California. It doesn't say, it says brothers and sisters of the half or whole blood. So adopted siblings would not be engaged in incest. Yeah, yeah. Now, there can be all kinds of other bases for making reports, but the, the law, the law makes a very clear distinction. It's for years, many of us who were working in this field would talk about incest and incest families when there was a boyfriend of a mom or a girlfriend of a dad engaging in sexual conduct with one of the children. Technically, in California, that's not incest. It's sexual assault, but it's not incest. And so it's good to be careful with the terms that we use.